Well, I wish to extend you all a, a very warm welcome to a, this historic occasion and this historic building. It was in this building that the vices of Dr. Begg, Professor Smeaton, Dr. Kennedy, and many others were raised in the attempt to stem eh, the flood of backsliding and apostasy that took place in the free church of the disruption, which began with such promise and so early began to show defections from the faith. It was in this building that Principal Rainey used his powers of eloquence and organization to sway the Free Church Assembly of that date according to his will. But we are not gathered here today to remember those who sincerely and strongly endeavor to stem the time of tide of apostasy and failed so badly. Uh, but we are here to remember an event that took place uh, that involved one minister of the gospel. One hundred years ago, Dr. Kennedy's place was empty. Dr. Begg's place was empty. Their successors were not worthy of the place they had. The Declaratory Act had been passed in the previous year. The foundations of the free church of the disruption were destroyed. Appeals were made uh, to have uh, that act repealed, and these all failed. One hundred years ago, uh, there were between 500 and 600 uh, ministers and elders gathered in these halls, in this hall. There are about 750 of us here today. But we can well imagine, if we cast our mind back, what it must have appeared to the one man uh, that we are to mention when he was surrounded uh, by a hostility on the right hand and on the left hand. The disciples of Rainey, those who were no longer consistent in their opposition eh, to the Declaratory Act, and that he was alone, surrounded as I am just now, eh, with you all here today, how intimidating eh, must it have been to flesh and blood eh, to be faced eh, with such an issue. And yet, the Reverend Donald McFarlane received the grace to come forward to this table in front of me here to protest and uh, to lay his protest on the table and so separate from the Declaratory Act Free Church and take the first and the most essential step to set up the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. And we are here today to give thanks for the grace that was bestowed upon him, to give thanks that in his case, eh, the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled that promise he gave to the great apostle of the Gentiles many centuries ago. My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in the weakness. And we are here to give thanks that for the grace bestowed upon him, and how clear it was, and how clear it is, and that grace was indeed bestowed upon him. And therefore I welcome you all from our congregations 
in Scotland, in England, in Ireland, in Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand, and in Zimbabwe, and our friends in Holland. Eh, we are glad to see you all here to join with us in rendering praise and thanks eh, to the God of eternity, who is from everlasting to everlasting God, for that event that took place here 100 years ago today, and to give thanks for the fact that we are here today eh, to keep this a commemoration of 100 years of preservation eh, of uh, the cause of Christ eh, connected with us eh, and bound up with the testimony for divine truth eh, that uh, remained with us. And uh, therefore, eh, we hope that the Holy Spirit of promise eh, will be present today and that he will give us a true spirit of thankfulness. And that will mean a true spirit of unworthiness, that we would have uh, the mind and the heart and the language of Jacob when he declared and acknowledged in the presence of God, I am not worthy of the least of all uh, the mercies or all the truth thou hast bestowed upon me. Now before I begin the public worship, I'd just like to read a letter from uh, 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 Mr. Duncan Mackay from Flasheter, an old elder in the church who uh, uh, regrets exceedingly uh, that he is not able to be with us today, but wishes us every success and liberty. And speaking about the testimony raised by Mr. McFarland and Mr. MacDonald in 1893, I hope uh, the testimony will be kept up to the glory of the last days and that uh, it will be kept for posterity. There's also a letter from Adelaide from a Presbyterian church there, uh, noting with interest the life and testimony of the Free Presbyterian Church, and saying it is true of us uh, that uh, we remember with gratitude to God uh, that your testimony has been a blessing to our souls. May the Lord give strength to you all to preserve for a further hundred years until the Lord will come. A lady two or three days ago, who was the last member of Mr. Cameron's, uh, said to me, I'm very sorry uh, that circumstances prevent me being present with you on Tuesday. But though I will not be there in body, I will be there in spirit, following every step. And I believe that, that is true of every genuine Free Presbyterian who cannot be here today. Nevertheless, we are glad that in the holy providence of God, we have all been brought together. And therefore, let us now proceed uh, to worship God. conclude with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. I shall now ask uh, the Reverend Alexander McPherson to uh, read his paper on events leading up to 1893. Will you come forward please? 